My name is Lisa Shaw, and this episode is on the 20s. During this time period, all ladies had an elegant shawl to wear on their night out. And today, we have taken a shawl pattern and added free motion sewing and cut work to mimic the style of the 20s. To do this, we first started with a doodle. And I, that's a simple drawing on a, a piece of paper. And I scanned this doodle, because this was going to be my inspiration for my free motion work. I've taken it and brought it into my software. And now I am allowed to create kaleidoscope patterns. Based upon this project, I needed to set my template image to be a square 16. So I'm going to scroll through my templates, select the proper one, and when I click OK, you can see that the pie shape wedge on the screen has changed. What's most exciting is on the right hand side here, you see a preview image. That means as soon as I rotate or resize my design, it is automatically mimicked in my kaleidoscope shape on the side, in the, in the preview. To get an up close and personal look, I simply click on the preview and it shows it here on the screen. If I'm satisfied with this, I can print this as a poster size. What that means is that I can choose to print on my regular standard printer a 22 inch page. So that's going to be tiled three by three and approximately 21 inches, 22 inches. And that's gonna allow me to create shapes that are gonna fit on the back of my shawl design. So here I have my full size printed kaleidoscope pattern that I've taped together using just a general ordinary printer. Looking at this, I see so many possibilities to use as sewing and cutting embellishments for my cape pattern. For example, now is the fun part. I get to take out specific elements and place them inside my cut areas to create a pleasing design. How much fun is this? Once I've created my entire layout, I'm going to scan or bring in to my cloud-based software that comes with this machine that we're going to use to cut and draw our shapes. And this software allows me to set which lines I'm going to stitch on and which lines I'm going to cut. So now I'm going to save my files to a USB stick and put them directly into my machine. I can choose my pattern, select save data, and select my USB stick, and it automatically will bring in the design, the cut file, and the draw file combined into one. So now we need to prepare our fabric for our cutting and stitching. To do that, I have my crepe on here placed on top of my pattern as a guide, and I have attached water-soluble stabilizer to the back. You'll want to make sure they're butted up close together and adhered to the crepon so that it becomes one solid unit. It makes it a lot easier to work on. For the black overlays, which is what we're going to be cutting, we have them cut to our specific size that we need. And again, we are attaching an adhesive wash-away stabilizer so that it this is what is going to be cut on and drawn. So we placed it on our 24 inch mat because we have divided our pattern into 24 by 12 inch sections. I have my design loaded into my cutting machine and I need to get ready to load my mat. Now before I start anything, I need to switch out my blade to the drawing pen and I'm using the water soluble so that it will disappear with water and that means I can draw on this pattern to give me the guidelines I need to follow. So once I load my mat I'm going to hit draw and start and the machine will draw my cutting my drawing lines my stitching lines right on the wash away stabilizer. This gives me a complete guide for my free motion stitching. So as you can see, we're about finished drawing our lines. So now we're going to keep the mat loaded in the machine and select to choose to cut the cut file that coordinates with this design.
finished, click OK. Now I choose the cut file. I need to switch out my, my pen to my cutting blade. I've hit cut, hit start, and we're good to go. Now while this is cutting, I have one already finished here, and you can see that my lines are drawn on my fabric and I can simply remove my section of my cape with all the cut files added that will create instant cut work on our finished design. So now I'm going to remove my mat out of the way and we're going to assemble our cape using the pattern underneath our taupe crepe on, put our two sides together and the center one in the middle. Follow the lines drawn right on the paper and they match perfectly for what we've planned. Now we're leaving the water soluble stabilizer on during the construction process because it gives you a little added stability when doing your free motion stitching. We're going to first use a decorative stitching to attach our two pieces to each other so that you create one solid unit. One tip that you may find useful because this is quite shifty material is to use a spray adhesive that's temporary that will hold all the layers sandwiched together and give you a more cohesive unit that makes it easier for your free motion stitching. Now we're ready to go to the machine and sew our free motion running stitches following our swirls and our small zigzag stitches to seal our cut work edges that we've created. Now it's always a good idea to practice on a smaller version before jumping right into your finished version. So I have created a mini sandwich that had my lines drawn on it and I'm going to show you how I did the free motion stitching along the swirls. We also did stitching a small zigzag around the cut work edges but I have my free motion foot attached and that is how I'm going to do my swirls. The best way I found to start at the base of one of them and take a few stitches to lock our stitch in place and then simply move the fabric to the side. You don't have to go in one direction because free motion lets you go in any direction that you'd like to. And follow the main spine all the way around first because we're gonna make two passes. Now one thing to remember is that this design is extremely forgiving. So if you aren't a perfect free motion stitcher, you can put your two lines closer together, right on top of each other. Just remember when you come up to an intersection, you move and do that intersection and come back so that you are actually making two lines of stitching. Let me Stop with my needle down so I can get a better grip on my fabric. Start again. Follow my line and make two rows of stitching all the way through. And that's how simple we can do our free motion stitching on this fun little project. So now, once you've gotten your practice and you've started your entire big project. This is what you can create. All this gold thread has two, three, and four stitches going around, all in free motion. We have a zigzag stitch that finishes the edge along the front, which gives it a more balanced look because we put a nice heavy lace towards the bottom that complements this design and this exquisite fabric and metallic thread and all the cut work. The sheer fabric allows the sparkle of the taupe to shine right through and the gold thread just is a complete sparkle without going over the top. Isn't this a lovely cape to be worn over your little black dress for a fancy event in your future? <laughs>